You may not recognize the two men in this picture, but if you have been involved with discussions regarding young earth creationism, then their work has likely directly affected you. These two men are Henry Morris and John Whittacombe. In the 1960s, they were in no small part responsible for the resurgence in the literal reading of Genesis that more or less laid the foundations of modern scientific creationism. Their 1961 book, The Genesis Flood, put a shiny new coat on ideas like catastrophism as related to interpretations of geology and paleontology. This later led Morris to play a part in founding the Creation Research Society and the Institute for Creationist Creation Research, a prominent, well, both are prominent young earth creationist organizations that served as sort of grandparents for many of the creationist organizations that we all know today. Now, today being October 22nd, 2011, the 6,015 15th anniversary of the start of the creation week recorded in Genesis, according to Bishop James Usher. I thought I'd dive into what, in my mind, are the biggest reasons why scientific creationism fails to meet the standards of true science. Creationist organizations make elaborate arguments against established scientific fields and concepts like uniformitarianism, emergence, and most famously biological evolution via natural selection. Creation scientists claim that their work is legitimate science, and that the only reason they aren't getting proper representation in prestigious peer-reviewed journals and equal time in public education is because of a conspiracy on the part of uniformitarian naturalist, atheism, and humanist. But this is not the case. The primary reason that creation science is not taken seriously is because it begins with a premise that cannot be falsified. It begins with the answers and then only acknowledges information that confirms or supports the already decided upon dogma. It's not about an honest search for truth or the ability to discard a premise that doesn't work, because the Bible, particularly Genesis, must be seen as historically and scientifically infallible for fundamentalist Christianity to work. No evidence, therefore, can be allowed to challenge it. This is written into the foundational statements of several of the most prominent young earth creationist organizations, including the ICR itself. Henry Morris, for example, said this, The main reason for insisting on the universal flood as a fact of history, and as the primary vehicle for geological interpretation, is that God's word plainly teaches it. No geologic difficulties, real or imagined, can be allowed to take precedence over the clear statements and necessary inferences of scripture. Kurt Wise is another prominent creationist who has been very influential in Christian fundamentalist circles over the last two decades. He has an authentic PhD, which isn't necessarily true for all the prominent creation scientists or so-called prominent creation scientists, and even studied under, and I kid you not here, my atheist and skeptic friends, he studied under Stephen J. Gould. Yeah. Richard Dawkins and others have called him an honest creationist because of statements like this that he has made. Although there are scientific reasons for accepting a young earth, I am a young earth creationist because that is my understanding of the scripture. As I shared with my professors years ago, when I was in college, if all the evidence in the universe turns against creationism, I would be the first to admit it but I would still be a creationist, because that is what the word of God seems to indicate. Here I must stand. So that's what we're talking about here. Assertions that begin with the idea that certain books can't be challenged and should be believed primarily because, as Answers in Genesis put it, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. It doesn't matter that biblical creationism hasn't contributed much anything, much of anything, to theoretical or applied sciences like evolutionary biology has, because in the minds of its, adher of its adher adherents, it is true because an intelligent designer exists, and they know for sure that this designer is their god. But real science asks hard questions and is willing to toss out entire fields if necessary. The discredited field of alchemy is a good example of this. Creationists like to point out that science is constantly changing and theories are tossed out all the time. But though they portray it as a weakness, it is actually a strength. A strength that, 
an allegedly infallible sacred text can never have. The fact that science can reevaluate itself makes it stronger. Biblical creationists admit that there is no evidence that can ever cast doubt on their beliefs, and they take pride in it. And that is truly the saddest thing about this whole debate.